On the southern tip of Africa, the city of Cape Town is home to more than 4 million people. It's also home to thousands of plant species. Cape Town is a biodiversity hotspot because it has got incredible floral diversity. More than 9,600 species of plants just in Cape Town. And on top of that, there is a growing urban population. So there's quite a strong need to conserve large portions of Cape Town, but at the same time there's um, urgent human needs. From a young age, Frances Taylor has been fascinated by nature, and she's made it her life's mission to ensure that nature thrives in the most challenging urban environments. We need to get to the point where humans and the way that they develop cities uh, is compatible with uh, biodiversity. We need to get to the point where the way we take care of our, our personal spaces and our public spaces um, enhances the biodiversity instead of flattening and destroying it. In 2016, Francis started Community, an organization that works with Cape Town residents to reintroduce indigenous plants into urban areas. Community is working together with community groups with their own private and public spaces and we work to make even the smallest of places a wildlife hotspot. Nice. We work to enhance that space, enhance the diversity of plants and insects and bird life in that space. We do that so that each of the gardens is within a network. Each small uh, garden or, or biodiversity hotspot that we create is connected to another spot and each of these spots participates in a network so instead of needing one large piece of land to conserve we've got many small pieces that are connected to one another and creating gardens like these are at the heart of this project by planting gardens with a select group of plants that we choose we can support local insect and bird life and by doing that we can relink relationships between plants and insects and birds that have become broken apart by urbanization. For example, um, birds and insects that are in nature reserves, it becomes like an island within the urban landscape. And because they have no uh, food or shelter to find nearby the, the nature reserve. So if we plant gardens with a, a select group of uh, plants within those gardens, each of those gardens is like a fueling station or a stepping stone for the, the insects and birds to make their way through the urban landscape. Otherwise, they become more vulnerable. So by giving them ways to move through and across the city, we're making them stronger and more resilient in the face of climate change. One of their flagship projects is an indigenous garden in the Cape Flat. Today we are here at Bottom Road Sanctuary. This is in the south of Cape Town in an urban residential area. And we are here looking at over 60,000 plants, um, converting what used to be a dump site into an urban wilderness for insects, birds, all sorts of um, reptile and um, other wildlife that ordinarily wouldn't have been here. Okay, so the first step when creating a garden is to uh, find a local community group that's interested in taking care of that space. Once we've uh, found that group of people, we give them skills in order to take care of that space. So the first thing is for them to learn how to grow the plants they need for their garden. Then, um, once they've learned how to do that, uh, we plant the garden and we prepare the soil and grow the garden into a space that sustains increased insect and bird life. Once that is done, we teach the, the local community group how to monitor that biodiversity. And this idea is catching on as Francis's reach spreads further across the city of Cape Town. In Bontehevel, we are working on Feinbos Peace Gardens. Bontehevel is a violent place. Um, but it's also an undergreen space. So we couple those two issues together and we make Feinbos Peace Gardens. We're creating a, a place of um, rest 
and restoration, but also making the space more beautiful pe for people and at the same time attracting the insects and birds and those sort of things back to Bontieville. This used to be an entire driveway and I could not believe that I could plant anything here. From my garden I get cabbage, I had cauliflower. At the moment you can see beautiful green peppers there for the chili tree. There's tomatoes just growing all over the show. You know we're in a community that is very um, be challenged with drugs and, and gangsterism and also poverty. And so if we can restore the pride and dignity within our neighborhood, that you can eat from your own garden, I think that to me was the best thing that I can just come to my garden, even send my grandchildren to my garden to pick something from the garden for the pot. It is such a wonderful feeling. In working with plants, working within a garden and repairing a piece of biodiversity by planting locally appropriate plant species. What we're doing is physically improving the space. We're bringing back the insects and birds that would have originally been in that space and we're repairing the relationships between those plants and the birds and the insects and that's really important for our health. It's really important because we rely on nature for our food, for our water, and for our physical and emotional well-being. It's also really important to um, be engaged with our environment and value our environment. And we should be very aware that um, the health of that physical space shapes who we are and it, it's part of our emotional and spiritual well-being. great examples of how we can work 